This recipe for strawberry galette is sponsored by Squarespace. Everything you need to make and run a website wrapped up in a toasty crust. Get 10% off yours at squarespace.com slash ragusea. The galette is a truly liberating form of pie. It requires no dish and no talent. And even if that weren't true, I would still prefer this over a deep fruit pie baked in a pan because a galette gives you a higher proportion of crust relative to the filling. And I'm a crust man all day long. The crust is just a basic pastry dough that I would normally make in a food processor, but here's a low-tech method. Like two cups or 260 grams of flour on a big cutting board. It does not have to be precise. I'll do a quarter cup of sugar, maybe 50 grams, but you could double that. I like for my crust to be just barely sweet. Maybe half a teaspoon of salt. That's moderate. You could go higher, especially if you're using unsalted butter, which I am not. One cold stick. That's eight ounces or 225 grams. Got to be cold so it does not melt. If I was going to do this in a food processor, I would cut that butter into chunks and then just pulse until the butter seems to disappear. But you can just take a big old knife and cut. And cut some more and some more. Bring it together, chop through it, and repeat. You want to keep this vegan, use shortening instead of butter. I really prefer the knife to the more traditional methods of using a pastry cutter or forks. It's just so easy and simple, and I think it gets you a more crumbly pastry at the end, which is what I like. When the butter is just a bunch of little grains of rice in the flour, I'll make a mound and a little well at the center and pour in just enough cold liquid to bring this together into a dough. Be conservative, you can always add more. Yes, I'm using white wine. It gives pie crusts a lovely fruity aroma, and the alcohol maybe helps keep it tender. Alcohol does not react with gluten the way that water does. But you could absolutely use just water or use something else, fruit juice, milk, whatever, as long as it's cold. The key is to only add the tiniest amount necessary to make this come together into a dough. I think I did maybe four tablespoons, 60 mils. This should not feel like a bread dough. It should be on the verge of crumbling apart. If it's easy to work with at this stage, the final result will be chewy, not tender and crumbly. I'll wrap that up and it needs to sit in the fridge for about a half hour. The flour will hydrate in that time so it won't be quite as crumbly when we go to roll it out. While we're waiting, we can make our filling. It's strawberry season where I live, so I've got eight ounces of farm fresh strawberries That's half a pint, a quarter kilo. I've washed them, and I like to dig out the stems with my thumbnail. That way I can get out some of the fibrous white flesh underneath, but it doesn't matter that much. Everything is going to get softened in the oven. Thin slices, again, does not have to be perfect or particularly thin. They're going to get cooked a lot. In a bowl, and then this is highly optional, some lime. Especially with real springtime strawberries, they're so sweet that some additional acid is nice to have. And I like the lime flavor too, which is concentrated in the zest. I'm scraping some of that in there. If you want to keep the strawberry flavor pure, you could just use the juice. And you don't need much, less than half a lime for starters at least. We can adjust. Similarly, we can adjust sugar, but I think a tablespoon is a good starting point. Put that in there, give it a stir, and then we'll set that aside to just let the sugar pull moisture out of the strawberries. It'll happen in minutes. Meanwhile, a little mixing bowl for whipped cream. At most, a cup of cold cream goes in there, 200-250 mils. You can whip cream with a hand whisk, but I'm not gonna. The trick is to stop beating when the cream is about doubled in volume. It's thick, it's leaving ribbons in there, but it's still smooth and silky. If you pass this point, it'll rapidly transform into something that looks like loose cottage cheese, and there's no way to undo that. A little sugar, again, I think a tablespoon is a good starting place, but you might want more. You could put some vanilla in there, but today I'm going to use almond extract, maybe a teaspoon. And here's something fun that you can do if you have it. Mix in a little sour cream or yogurt or any thick fermented dairy situation. You've got to do this after you've whipped the cream, and it will make the texture of the cream kind of heavier, but I quite like that, and it adds great depth of flavor. Give that a taste and you can adjust it however you like. I think I want a little more sugar, but I don't like for my cream to be too sweet. And I definitely want more sour cream. Cover that up. Whipped cream really absorbs smells in the refrigerator, which is where this goes until we eat. A couple other little jobs. I'm going to prepare a little topping to sprinkle over the crust. This is demerara sugar, but any form of coarse sugar would be perfect. You want big, fat crystals of sugar. And you could just use that, but I like to grab some similarly coarse-grained salt and mix in a little bit of that. Maybe three parts sugar to one part salt. If you don't like salty sweets, don't do this. We'll need something to brush on the crust to make that topping stick, and I'm going to do egg wash. An egg with a little bit of water beaten up nice and smooth. This will also make the crust 
crust shiny, which I like because I'm a primitive creature. You could use melted butter for this purpose instead, or maybe coconut oil if you don't want dairy. Let's check on our strawberries, which are already looking syrupy thanks to that sugar. Give them a good stir just to make sure that everything is coated, and then give one a taste. Ah, oh, it looks like a heart. That tastes good to me. Okay, let's prepare our baking sheet. And if you're not using parchment paper in the kitchen, get ready for your life to improve. There's no sticking and you won't have to wash the pan afterward. Now we can get ready to roll the pastry out. And if you've got a granite or marble countertop, that is the best surface. A bunch of flour goes right on there. Stone is cold, which will keep the butter in the pastry from melting. I'll get my oven heating to 350 Fahrenheit, 180C, convection. If you don't have convection, go a little bit hotter. It's been about a half an hour and my pastry is ready. You can see that it's more dough-like and stable after hydrating in the fridge. Good amount of flour on top, and I need a rolling pin. I can't find my rolling pin, but guess what? A wine bottle is a perfect substitute. Here's the best advice ever for rolling out pastry. Roll a little, then turn 90 degrees. Roll a little, then turn 90 degrees. This accomplishes two important things at once. It makes sure that you're rolling evenly in all directions, and for a galette, you do want something as close to a circle as you can reasonably make. And also make sure that your pastry will not stick to your working surface. Every time you turn it, you can kind of wipe it around in the flour and that'll keep it from sticking to the board. You want it maybe an eighth of an inch thick, half a centimeter, basically as thin as you can get it, but it still holds together when you move it around. Speaking of which, before we put in the filling, we need to kind of drape this over the rolling pin and transfer it over to our baking sheet. Or if you have a large spatula, like one for pancakes, you can actually assemble this right here and then lift it onto the pan. Strawberries in the center. I'm spooning them out so that I don't dump all the excess syrup in there. You gotta minimize moisture in these things. You leave yourself a really wide border all the way around and then you just pick up the excess and fold it on top of the filling. You can do a fancy decorative crimping situation or not. You could just bake that, that'd be great, but I've got my sugar topping and I need my glue to stick that on. I'm painting on my egg wash, nice and heavy, but melted butter is nice too. You could even just use the spare syrup that we left behind in the bowl. That'd be vegan too. I'll grab that sugar and salt mixture and just sprinkle that generously over the top of the crust. Guess I had a little bit too much. Now, hmm, I thought I had a bigger spatula. This one is not big enough. Well, here's the thing. You can just kind of flop it on over. See? Surprisingly unscathed. Probably easier to build the pie on the baking sheet. Though, this does prove another point. If you want to double this recipe, make two pies, not one big pie. When a galette gets too wide, it just doesn't hold together, even after it's baked. In the oven that goes, it'll take an hour at most, I'd say. Some people like to bake these at a higher temperature. I do not like soggy pie, so I want to give this a chance to cook all the way through before the top gets too brown. If you cut into this right now, after it came out of the oven, everything would just spill on out. Let it cool for like an hour and the filling will set up like jam. In fact, I believe it literally is a jam at this point. You can cut this into four nice wedges on a plate, a nice dollop of that slightly sour whipped cream with the almond flavoring in it. I'm gonna be honest, you know what that tastes like? that tastes like a high-class Pop-Tart. Now, interesting thing, Lauren liked it, but she thought the combination of strawberry and lime tasted like Kool-Aid. I think that's an association you'd have if you grew up drinking that stuff, the combination of berry flavor and citric acid. If that sounds bad to you, then leave out the lime. Or put anything that you want in your galette. This is such a simple, elegant wrapper for anything, much like a website template from Squarespace. It can wrap up anything good you've got. Maybe you've just got a picture of yourself or of a thing you made, and you want to use it to persuade someone to hire you. There's a whole bunch of templates for simple resume type sites. This is a nice feature. If the text is not popping off the background, try tweaking the image, blurring it, or making it darker. There. Worried how your site might look on mobile? Well, no need to imagine. Here's how it'll look on a phone. You can tweak your design accordingly. And then that's it. You publish it and Squarespace hosts the site for you. They can register your domain. They can handle any transactions you need to do on your site. Money, emails, whatever. And a site like this can be yours for 10% off. Just go to squarespace.com slash Ragusea and use my code Ragusea. That's all in the description. As is the recipe for this lovely springtime pie. Do people know that I always put the recipes in the description? They're down there. Trust me.